As Jamie said, um, that is the format that we're going to take as Mayor Littlefield will speak for 10 minutes, and then uh, Chris Matthews will have the second 10 minutes, and then we'll do questions and answers. I'm going to pass around index cards in just a moment. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to pull one out, that's the only way that we can accommodate questions in this format. Um, we typically don't have any uh, advice or counsel to, to the folks that are here, but since this is a public meeting and the issues um, can get rather heated because it can uh, affect the bottom line one way or another, we do ask for respect and nobody interrupting the speaker. Um, and the only way that we will take a question is by the index card. So with that, uh, Mayor Littlefield.
I am amused and somewhat amazed when people talk about the police department being understaffed and underpaid. And uh, perhaps that's something that you would like to talk about this morning. But the facts are that the city of Chattanooga is well above average. The average uh, nationally for police per 1,000 population, I don't want to get too many technical details, is about 181 police officers per 1,000 population. We're more than 100 higher than that. If Chattanooga was average in terms of police officers, we would have 307 uniformed commissioned police officers. We have about 460. And when the present academy is completed, we'll have close to 500. And in terms of pay, we do regular pay comparisons with other communities. And the last time we checked, our police officers, beginning police officers, were paid more than Atlanta's. Now, is that enough? No. In the emergency services, you can never pay a person who puts their life on the line enough. But it's all that, uh, all that would be uh, expected of a community like Chattanooga to be actually doing a better job than many other communities. The, um, the budget for the fire and police department during this term, this mayor's term, has increased 50%, 50% over the last seven years. The police department alone has gone from 36 million to, uh, excuse me, yeah, 36 million to over 54 million. $18 million increase. Every year, $18 million increase. And the fire department has gone up 50% too. And if you took the increase in the fire department and police department, that would be a 60 cent tax increase. But the city did not raise taxes that much. They raised taxes a fraction of that because we were able to make cuts to efficiencies in other places. A part of city government that is uh, not talked about all that much, but it's very important, and it comes, uh, it comes up from time to time, even in unincorporated areas, is codes enforcement. Now, I'm not just talking about building codes. I'm talking about housing codes and property codes. And uh, that might not sound like something that you would want to entertain, but I can tell you that we get calls all the time from areas outside the city of Chattanooga. People who don't understand how this works saying, can't you come and do something about my neighbor? My neighbor is, in common terms today, a hoarder. They're piling up stuff on their property, and we want something done about it. The city of Chattanooga has the ability to do that. East Ridge has the ability. Red Bank has to do that. College Dale has to do that. That's what cities do. We take care of those kinds of situations. I've gotten a signal that I have very little time left, but let me say this. An important part of cities is the provision of public facilities. Memorial Auditorium in Tivoli would not exist if it were not in the city of Chattanooga. We all consider those part of the fabric of our community. The city of Chattanooga is the sole provider and supporter of those organizations, those institutions, those buildings, and all that it takes to keep them running. I hope that those of you who live out in this area have seen the summit of softball. The summit of softball is just down the road to the left. I think you can get a good overview of it if you just turn in there and look at it today. The summit of softball is an example of the kind of recreational facilities that this entire community not just the city, but the city and the county, if we're going to be a world-class community. College Dale and Chattanooga are working together to be a world-class community. The city of East Ridge is now making great strides in recreation. And that sounds like, well, is that just fluffy? No, because it fills up hotels and it produces revenue. As for the city of Hamilton, people have asked me what I think about that. Well, this, the state of New Jersey has the highest annual average tax uh, of, of any state, and they have more municipalities than any state. It's the most densely populated state. And every time we duplicate services, the cost to everyone increases. The city of Hamilton is far outside any area that the city of Chattanooga would envision annexing 
any time in even the distant future. If we became Los Angeles, I cannot imagine us reaching up into that area and annexing areas that, that really are rural and will continue to be rural for quite some time. So, I'm just interested to hear the other speaker and then I'm interested to take your questions and look forward to it. Thank you. Again, if anyone does have a question, I am standing in the back. Just give me a high sign and I'll give you an index card if you need a pen. Let me know. Uh, Chris Matthews will now we'll, we'll speak and uh, again, again, at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Chris Matthews. I'm actually the uh, president of the Friends of Hamilton Initiative. Um, I'm actually grew, was born in Erlanger and grew up in the area out here and moved my family back here in 2001. So, and I also found out recently during the process that I actually have deep historical ties to the area that we're talking about. The Friends of Hamilton was actually formed by a sit, uh, of community citizens from Birchwood, Georgetown, Udawa, Harrison, and they're, they're across the board. They're former state legislative officials, uh, utility people, um, community, uh, at all levels of community, um, and next door neighbors. So it's not uh, uh, this, this you know, big organization that's out there doing this. Uh, we're, we're actually local community citizens, not politicians. We're, this is something that we feel uh, very passionate about. And the main issue comes down to two things. It comes down to local planning and forced annexation. What we're looking at in the city of Hamilton, and, and we, we get this question a lot, when you look at the city, the area in yellow is the initial incorporation for the city of Hamilton. The residents between the current city limits of Chattanooga and uh, the city of Hamilton, this demilitarized zone, is the area that's also of contention. Uh, those residents do not want to be part of the city of Chattanooga. And the reason for that is if you look at the history of the state of Tennessee, for 170 years in the state of Tennessee, the way the cities and county structures um, and the way cities are incorporated and annexed was the same. But in 1998, uh, the Tennessee Municipal League, along with a number of legislators from metro governments, decided that they needed to change those laws because the Fifth Amendment right basically precluded them from being able to forcibly annex communities. So they put this urban growth boundary and urban growth plan in place. What this urban growth plan did is, if I were Red Bank and the city of Chattanooga wants to annex Red Bank, they would have to go to the voters in order to, be, uh, to have a voting right to be part of the city of Chattanooga. As the city of Hamilton, if we want to incorporate the city, we also have to go to the voters to get the city incorporated. It goes on the ballot and review. However, for annexation, they open up an urban growth boundary among a group of uh, politicians, and they basically said, yeah, we want to extend our boundaries, and then the citizens have no right to vote. Once they're annexed, they have one month to challenge the annexation, and it goes to one judge who makes a decision if you get annexed or not. They took out the right to a jury trial that basically said citizens of your peers can say, yes, we want to be part of the city, or no, we don't. So in that essence, um, we, we could see the writing on the wall what was coming down the road for the city of Hamilton, or for the Udawa, Harrison, Birchwood communities. So in 2003, well, the, the bill was passed in 98. It went into effect in 2001. And then in 2003, they exercised it with the monstrosity annexation of the interstate. So if you look, they only annexed the industrial property at the side of the interstate from the city of Chattanooga, and that was strictly a tax grab. And in the state's eyes, it's actually against the law to do that kind of annexation. You have to take the whole community, not just profitable areas. So what we did is, because that, that border shifted us further south, and the way that the, the urban growth boundary laws are stated, we can't incorporate a new city within five miles of a city over 100,000 and within three miles of a city under 100,000. So that's why you see the radial rings. Those are the boundaries to the other cities around us. But what we can do is we can incorporate the main body of Hamilton and then we can self-annex him back to the existing boundaries without opening the urban growth plan and without the city annexing, but property owners can self-annex into the community themselves. So the residents in these areas have all been highly positive on the city of Hamilton and the initiative we're doing, and they all want to be part of the new city of Hamilton. The discussion about metro government, you'll hear that thrown around, metro, 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 oh, we're for metro government. I'll tell you emphatically, the city of Hamilton is not for metro government. And I would challenge anybody that's in the current administration if they live in a metro government, because I have. I live in the largest one in the country, which is the city of Jacksonville. It's highly dysfunctional and, and literally crime-ridden everywhere. So the representation of a local community like Collegedale, Red Bank, Saudi Daisy, all these communities are representative of the people that live in their communities. 
And those residents can then basically elect the officials that are representative of themselves and, and all the tax dollars and everything go back to that community and service that community. We don't want to see our area out here being managed from a community that's over 20 miles away and some areas 40 miles away. That just doesn't mean, that's just not representative of the, of the citizens that live in this area. The other thing we see is, and we've seen this in the last few years here, if you remember the, uh, the apartments on Hunter Road, we had an issue where the county commission said, no, we don't want these apartments in this area. So the property only flipped it into the city of Chattanooga. <coughs> they figured it would be a fast move right into getting annexation and getting the, the rezoning of the property. Well, what wound up happening was they had 100 people show up down there from the county saying, no, we're not going to support this. And basically, those issues will continue to happen again and again and again. And every time one of these rezoning things happens that affects our local area, it doesn't affect Chattanooga, we have to run downtown and address these. That doesn't make any sense for us. From a government standpoint, services standpoint, we are keeping the flattest, smallest government we possibly can. We're putting term limits on our city council and our city charter. We're putting term limits on the mayors. We're going to actually put in there where you can't jump between the two positions. We're also going to subcontract our services with the, Chatt with the uh, Hamilton County uh, Park and Hamilton County Sheriff's Department and the Highway 58 Fire Department to be our services for the rural area for fire service. One of the things we're going to do with the fire service to increase our services offerings is today's services in the county are subscription based, which means that residents have to subscribe to get fire coverage. It doesn't mean that you won't be covered if you have a fire. The Hamilton County Fire Department has a policy that they will come out and service any fire if any issue arises. But what, what this means is with the incorporation of the city, the city, if you live in the city limits, the city will pick up the tab for basically covering the subscription for all the fire departments in that area, which basically helps the fire department have a budget that's stable and they can plan and actually provide more staffing, more resources, more apparatus, things like that. Um, and then the other big services we have to maintain are the roads. So in the incorporated area of Hamilton, we're looking at 90 miles of public roads. We've got about 60 miles of uh, state roads and 20 miles of private roads. And, uh, and then some emergency funding and stuff. Originally, when we put the initiative forward, we had a tax rate of 1.5%. And then we, we, after we did the budget for five years and the services plan and looked at you know, uh, working with other municipalities in the area who've been very helpful with you know, saying, have you thought of this? Have you thought of this? So we've, we've actually had a very strong support from other cities. Um, we were able to drop our tax rate down to 1.25, which is 1% lower than the city of Chattanooga. Additionally, we don't have all the stormwater fees that Chattanooga is imposing on nonprofit organizations and other businesses within the community. So we're trying to keep those fees down. Um, I mean, just an example in Bayside, you've seen that their, their fees, I think, it really started out 40000 and went down to like 12000 But what, what we're looking at here is we're looking to keep our infrastructure and the quality of life and everything we have in this area very small, very thin, and, uh, and, and still maintain our quality of life with a local representation, local government. And, and I would encourage everybody, if you haven't, visit our website, please visit Friends of Hamilton, visit our Facebook page, we put all of our information out there, we're transparent, we, want, we don't want to hide anything, we want everybody to see what, all the details. And, uh, and please, if you need to sign a petition today, we have uh, Joe in the back back here who's actually taking signatures on our petitions. Thank you. Please give him your questions and he'll feed them up to me. We'll give each party an opportunity to respond to each question. Um, and I would ask each party if you could limit your comments to maybe about three minutes or up to three minutes. Yeah, that'd be fine. Or, or you can stand whatever you're more comfortable with. That way we can get through as many as we can. So the first question is, if the city annexes this area, is there a point they should stop? What is the optimal city size? Who would like to go first? Well, I the city of Chattanooga has no plans to annex this area, so I would defer to the city of Hamilton. Do you want to answer the second part? What is the optimal city size? Oh, well, the optimal city size is one that can support urban services to a level that will attract something as big and significant as Volkswagen and Austin and uh, support Blue Cross Blue Shield's new headquarters and to provide high quality. The first question from there. It was, if the city annexes this area, is there a point they should stop? What's the optimal city size? Yeah, and so at the annexation of this area, um, 
currently the city is at its current urban growth boundary um, that's defined by, the, well, by all the local mayors and stuff. Uh, but they have to reopen that urban growth boundary again. So right now, it is a stopping point, which is great, and we don't want that reopened. Um, the optimal size of a city, in my view, and, and we've had this discussion with other city managers, we don't believe it's a city's right to grow. It's a city's privilege to grow, and it's based on the citizens of the community. And, and, and that's, that's the key thing. We'll, we'll just go back and forth. You know, the last one speaking, speak first on the next question. The next question is, what is the single greatest benefit for citizens to be of the new Udawa, and what's the single greatest disadvantage? So the single greatest benefit is self-governance. Basically, if you don't like the governor, or, the, or if you don't like the, the mayor or the city council, you have a right to change it. Your vote is one in, basically one in 15,000 in the city of Hamilton versus one in 170 plus thousand in the city of Chattanooga. And, and the second part was the the, the the greatest disadvantage of the the greatest the disadvantage is we have another layer of government, which is something that in the county here, you know, personally I don't want another layer of government. But if we have to have another layer of government, let's make it as small and as thin as possible, and and, and be done with it. And, and if you look at the benefits that are promoted for metro government, is having single services and stuff. Well, if you look at the city of Hamilton, we have single services for fire and sheriff and all those services. So so we. have flattened it just by contracting with the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. Again, the city of Chattanooga is the services are defined basically by the voting uh, 
uh, the citizens in the area. So it's part of our city services and part of our charter and everything else. That's all defined by the community itself. I have uh, two questions, one addressed to each of you, so I'll address them that way, and if the other has a response afterwards, I'll start by Mr. Matthews, it sounds as if you want to start a city to keep from being absorbed into a city. Can you comment on this? You referenced what all of the citizens want. How could you determine this? Right. So where this came about is we started this exercise in August of last year before the announcements to accelerate the expansion of Chattanooga into the rural areas. Um, and this, this actually came about just from looking at what happened in 2003, what happened last year with the apartments, and we could just see the writing on the wall. And we said, okay, is this a valid point? We started talking to business leaders, other community leaders, you know, HCRAA, Uttarwell Citizens Responsible Growth, all these various community leaders. And we realized at that point that this is something that we have to be proactive about. We can't be reactive about. And so we started the process, and then we were originally going to have a November 1st announced date, but with the urban growth boundary being pushed up, we, we launched even sooner. So, does that answer the question? Do you want to have a response? No. Okay. And the next question, Mr. Mayor, how can you say you're not interested in the area representing the city of Hamilton when you've often said you want metro government, meaning all, all the county? Well, in a metro government, there is a general service district and an urban service district. And I would say that under a metro government, Hamilton would be in the general service district, just as in Davidson County. There are outlying areas, and there are also satellite cities in Davidson County, Nashville, that uh, have a different tax rate. And so people would be taxed at the rate of services that they're receiving. I think that's what we all perceive as fair. But in a community like Chattanooga, which is not unlike Nashville now, not unlike Columbus, Georgia, not unlike Athens, Clark County, Georgia, and not unlike Jacksonville, where you have a community that has a, an urbanized core, and then you have those areas outside, then people should be taxed and receive the services that they receive. And the, the real uh, problem is, just as I referred to New Jersey, the more that you create these little small enclaves, the more expensive it is for everyone. And that's why, at least in part, New Jersey has the highest tax rate in the country. Response? Um, the only thing I can see there that, that relates to that discussion about metro government, it sounds like class warfare where you're actually adjusting the prices depending on who can afford more money. Um, the, the other thing that, that, that strikes me about that is if, you know, I, I, I'm not against Chattanooga. Uh, just to give you a point, I mean, I, I started the Chattanooga Technology Council in 2005 to focus on our strengths around the 75-mile 70 70 area of Chattanooga. But looking at the tax base in Chattanooga today and the cost and the taxes and overhead, um, Chattanooga is extremely expensive. And personally, I don't believe in the, in the, um, the stormwater fees for 501c3 donation-based organizations. So. I'm glad you mentioned stormwater fees. That was really on my mental list that I need to refer to. Moving out of the city of Chattanooga will not permanently uh, remove the specter of stormwater fees. Stormwater fees are required by the federal government. I mean, you have to pay for treatment or, or handling of stormwater somehow, some way, either in the tax base or in a separate fee. And most communities that are dealing with this already have established stormwater utilities so that it becomes basically a part of the sewer system because it's above ground but it requires treatment of that water. Uh, I have had conversations with people at the federal level and the regulations are coming very quickly that watersheds will be the area that will be affected by stormwater feeds, which means that all of those areas that contribute to the flow and Chattanooga, being an old city, is at the bottom of the bowl, and everything that, that bubbles out of the ground or flows across the ground in Hamilton or out in East Brainerd or parts of Teutonia, you can pull the watershed for the Tennessee Valley, and you can see that area. It's been realized at the federal level that just imposing stormwater fees on central cities is, is contributing to sprawl, which costs everyone more money. You have to have more roads, you have to have more sewer lines, you have to have more everything if you're a sprawling community. So, uh, stormwater fees are coming very quickly for all of the areas outside the city of Chattanooga. That's not really a factor. Do you have a response? <coughs> okay. Um, 
we've got uh, we're we're moving right along, so we may have an opportunity for a couple more questions if you've got them. I've got several more in front here, but if you have a burning question, please uh, raise your hand for Josh. The next question, I believe we started the last one with you, Mayor. Um, why do why do citizens not have the right to decline annexation of their own properties? And that's basically because of the urban growth boundary that changes in 1998. It's actually part of a larger initiative, and I would strongly advise everybody to take a look at it and, and research it for themselves. But the way they changed the laws in 98, it took the rights away from the citizens so that they have a, a chance to challenge on their annexation after the annexation is done for 30 days. But nine times out of 10, it's one judge that's gonna make the ruling and he's gonna say, you know, he's gonna side with the metro government or the larger entity. So that law needs to be changed in the state of Tennessee. There's actually a bill in committee right now it's called the Anti-Agenda 21 Initiative Bill, and we highly recommend you call your state representatives to have them um, basically support that bill and, and push it through to take away some of the teeth of these urban growth boundaries. Well, I, Agenda 21 is a hot button issue that the legislature has. The legislature every year or every session has bills to try to amend the annexation laws. The annexation laws were very carefully uh, debated and discussed decades ago, and uh, Tennessee has one of the more progressive uh, uh, land use and regulation and, and annexation laws in the country, but it's not unique. Annexation by ordinance exists in many other places as well, and the intention of it is to reduce the cost on everyone. So uh, it is proposed to every session, it generally dies every session. Uh, and it has nothing to do with Agenda 21. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you have something you wanted to Yeah, I just wanted to respond to that. Um, the, the Agenda 21 initiative is much greater than, than it's being alluded to. Uh, the Agenda 21, in case you're not familiar with it, was an issue that came out of the Rio, Rio de Janeiro summit in like the mid-80s. And it was basically to put in these metro forms of government and restructure, specifically the United States, we're the only one that has property rights written into our Constitution. And so, so the, the intent is we can't directly attack these Agenda 21 property rights. So, but if they can put growth planning in place that indirectly attacks it is, is a, a model that they're using. Um, in 1996, you can research it yourself, in Istanbul, Turkey, Chattanooga was referenced as the poster child for the Agenda 21 and I think it was Urban House, Housing Growth 3 as the model cities for doing these Agenda 21 initiatives. Mayor, do you have any response? No, I mean, we could stand here and talk about Agenda 21 all day. That, that's just a specter that you really don't need to worry about. Uh, and you can go on the internet and look at it. Yeah, you can. It, it's, a, it's an entire catalog. It is an endless list of things that communities can do to try to improve their environment and their living quality. And that was all it was ever intended to be. I'd never heard of Agenda 21 until some of our local Tea Party people brought it up. Have you signed up to it? Excuse me, we're, we're taking questions only by index card. Had to go look it up, see what it was. But in any event, uh, it's something that you hear quite a bit about nowadays. But it reminds me of the old days of the John Burke Society and a number of other scare tactics that really have nothing to do with the issues that we're talking about here today. I have looked at some of the issues that people take issue with regarding Agenda 21, and one that I think is remarkable is that, that uh, they're against flood regulations. Well, flood regulations are just a recognition of reality. We have flooding problems in Chattanooga. We have flooding problems throughout this community. And uh, it's, not a, it's not taking people's property rights. It's simply recognizing the fact that if you build in the floodplain, you're going to get flooded, and that's going to cost somebody some money. If we have time after some additional questions, we can come back to this point. Uh, the next question, I think I started with your last. Um, Mayor, if you would take this one. For the city of Hamilton, there was no discussion of the costs for fire, police, garbage pickup, roads repair, costs for city officers, to name a few. How will these areas be covered? Who pays? Well, the citizens of the city of Hamilton will pay. That's, and that, that's why it's of no great concern to me if the area gets created, because my taxes should go down. So I'll answer that. Before we could even start the petition process, we had to identify the budgets for five years along with the service plan on what we were going to offer 
On the back of every petition, you will see a copy of that information and it's readily available. There's also links on the petition to the website that has even more information out there. And we strongly advise anybody that wants to know anything about it to please go out there and take a look at it. Um, in in our, our, our board, we have over 15 people on our board. We've got uh, probably 40 plus volunteers uh, that can also help you with any questions too. So just anything you have, let us know and we'll, we'll be happy to answer them. We have two questions that are related, so I'll, I'll put them both out there if you can have to start. How would building codes be handled? Who would be in charge for the city of Hamilton? Are areas known as Ottawa combined inside current city of Chattanooga truly represented with regard to ordinances and building guidelines? Would city of Hamilton be an improvement? <coughs> There's like four questions in there. Uh, so <clears throat> the first thing about building codes, one of the things that we would want to put in place in the city of Hamilton is a planning commission, and this is appointed by the local citizens on how, who goes in that planning commission. Um, we, we, we do want to have that, and so the, the discussion of having codes and things like that it, is not a discussion. Now, the flip side of that is with the city of Chattanooga annexing an area, you're not going to inherit hundreds of codes that you didn't vote on or agree to that, that basically are going to be enforced on you overnight. So these are codes that, that, that the citizens themselves can direct on what goes on in that community. Um, the second part of that is... Are areas known as Ottawa combined inside current city of Chattanooga truly represented with regard to ordinances and building guidelines? Would city of Chattanooga, city of Hamilton be improved? Right, and so now I can't answer that one as a business owner with inside the city limits of Chattanooga. If we had any here, I'm sure they would be happy to tell you if they're really represented. I know that one of our um, early members basically said that they felt like they've been paying taxes for nine years and they, they have not gotten any service from the city of Chattanooga, from, and that, not even the golden garbage can. So, so from their perspective, they, they haven't been represented. Well, if you have codes, you have to have code inspectors. And uh, you have to actually adopt codes. The city of Chattanooga has adopted standard codes, building codes, electrical codes, structural codes, uh, mechanical codes, which means heating and air conditioning and so forth. In order to assure that, that structures, particularly those structures that uh, uh, are commercial, are tend to house a large number of people, as in churches, meet certain basic requirements so that you don't have fires, you don't have collapses, you don't have those sorts of things that you have in areas where codes are not adopted and codes are not enforced. But that is, again, is not free. That's something that has a cost, and you have to have qualified and capable, ideally licensed people who make those decisions. And so the city of Chattanooga is very proud of its code enforcement offices. And again, uh, the, the significant investments in Chattanooga have occurred recently because of Chattanooga's high standards. And that's what we would hope to see throughout the county, including Hamilton. The next issue, the next question addresses an issue from two sides, Mayor, if you'd start. Discuss the advantages of a larger city of Chattanooga and its vision for the future. Does a fractured community <coughs> deter business growth in our region? Uh, well, yes, actually, a fractured community does deter business growth. And I think Nashville and Davidson County is the best example. It's in Tennessee. We can't say that that doesn't compare with us because it does directly. And Nashville and Davidson County have the lowest combined <coughs> effective tax rate of any metropolitan community in Tennessee, by far. And it is because they're efficient. And efficiency is really what it's all about. Having as few people doing the same job as possible, not having little dots of people, not creating little codes enforcement offices all over, but having one that can have the kind of staff and capability to undertake it. Having one fire department that is qualified and capable in 24 hours a day service and in the case of a metropolitan fire department, some paid and some not paid, some volunteer. That's the way it's organized. But having, uh, having single departments and efficient departments as opposed to multiple departments like they have in New Jersey. Do you want me to understand your question? Yeah, no, that's fine. As a, uh, and, and just listen to this, this, you know, I don't believe that having multiple communities fractures the community. Uh, we landed Amazon and we landed Volkswagen here in Chattanooga, and we have how many cities within the current area? So we, we've represented that that is an effect. As a former captain of a marine rescue agency, um, I know that the fire issue is not as big of an issue because we practice mutual aid in this area. 
which basically, if anybody remembers the uh, East Ridge floods, um, our team was called out to help assist East Ridge's fire department to rescue people in the community. So there's always ample supply of emergency personnel in the area for any incident. It, they can invoke mutual aid and everybody's ready to step up and help out. But his point, fire departments, including volunteer fire departments, need to have a reliable source of revenue. And right now, I'm talking with uh, many times over the years with officials in all of our volunteer fire departments, and we take nothing away from them. They do a great work. But they can't rely on their budget. And the county steps in every once in a while and uses our general tax money to supplement those volunteer fire departments. That's not really fair to you. It's not fair to us. They need a budget. They need a reliable budget. And they need an assessment of all the property owners that are served by that fire department so that they can have the kind of service that they need and deserve. <coughs> um, somebody read, read my question in advance, so the next one I'll, I will read it in case you have additional comments. It is addressed to the mayor. If you annex me, can you guarantee my fire and police will be as good or better? Our community has never had a home burn, but our local fire department would close. Well, the answer to that is yes, I do. We have, uh, we have the professional fire service. Again, taking nothing away from the volunteers, but uh, our service is held to a higher standard. And we have the largest, most efficient, most effective police department, far outstripping what the sheriff has. And uh, I know that the sheriff is stretched thin if other municipalities are created, they should provide their own police protection, or if the sheriff is providing it under contract, it should provide for enough uh, people to actually do that service, not understate the cost. And so we need to be watching, we need to be vigilant at the time with the county taxpayers to make sure that everyone is carrying a fair share. Um, my response to that is I agree in having the top fire service in, a, in any city or community. Um, one of the things that hasn't changed with city's annexation of 2003 into the current Udawa uh, business community is Tri Community Fire. Tri Community Fire was the same fire department that was covering the area before the annexation of 2003, and it's contracted to still cover the same area. So the fire service hasn't changed or hasn't increased since the incorporation. Um, that's the same type of relationships we're looking at as a contract relationship, just like Walden, just like Lakeside. The same thing is with the fire the sheriff's department. We've already got the, the uh, contracts for the sheriff's department on what it would cost for the officers to cover our areas. Uh, with the uh, opening of the dual station at Enterprise South, we have more coverage out here than we've ever had before, even with our cooperation with drive communities. They are a good fire department. The opening of Atlas and Pike, uh, it, it gives us even better ability to serve this area. Up until then, we have kind of cut off. We also uh, are reviewing right now an additional fire station location in the immediate Ultawa area. We've opened three fire stations since I've been mayor. One we just opened in Tiptonia, we served in uh, a new area that was newly annexed. Okay, this may be the last question. We'll, we'll start with you. What percent of property taxes that Chattanooga would collect for Ultawa would be diverted for other areas? I defer that one. I wouldn't really, you know, I'd have to get a calculator out and see that, but generally the areas that we annex uh, pay for themselves and sometimes just barely. But the whole idea is uh, for the efficiencies of scale to come into play. And so when we annex residential areas, they generally don't pay for themselves, but the people who live in those areas do get the benefit of the services that the city provides, which does include free garbage service in it. Figure the cost of your wow. If you figure the cost of your contract garbage service, if you figure the cost of trash removal, <laughs> consider the cost of recycling, which some people pay for. It comes very close to paying the cost of the taxes. We uh, we are unfortunately out of time for additional questions, but I would like to, to thank both of the speakers, and I'd like to thank everybody here for.